Mine is, oh no it's not, it's fucking shaking itself to death. Jesus Christ. It's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're just going to have a look at these two con <laughs> two crankshafts as a comparison. So people were asking a lot of questions. Um, we're going to forget this break for a moment. Uh, that break, if you haven't seen this, the other previous videos. And uh, we're going to have a look at all the um, witness marks and stuff and all the... Uh, what we can learn from this type of failure and, you know, crack propagation, fatigue benchmarking stuff like that all the rest of it um so there is a massive difference between these two crankshafts and i just thought i'd point them out um the difference between these two crankshafts is this one is a cast crankshaft <laughs> and broken this one's a cast crankshaft this one is a forged crankshaft and i wanted to do a video base not cranks uh, cast versus forging we'll do that in a later video um and actually that's a good example because i'm going to try and break this crankshaft um just by sticking it in the vise putting a pole on it and giving it a heave horn see if we can get this fucker to crack um and and basically shear like this um because it's already got the cracks in it we'll see if we can just get it to propagate and blow up but anyway um how can you tell a difference? Well, the main differences are, because you might dig out your crankshaft or what have you, is you can see that the surface finish, surface finish is one of the, the you know, um, the easiest ones to see. Someone did ask, is it that this is a more expensive crankshaft and there's, there's pen, spent more time um, finishing this off? Well, no, these are, that, this is forged and this is cast. So I'm going to show you the differences. Number one is you can see that this has this uh, sandy, grainy structure to it we bring you in master of zoom so if we just use this bit you can see it has this sandy grainy texture to it this texture here um some people kept on going on saying oh them are the tooling marks yes it, it's when they do this But what I'm saying is, is my God, that's rough. That's the, the point I was making. I was like, they can't have surely done that on purpose. Um, these striations are where these tools are cut. Uh, this is just rough as fuck. So that tool, or oh, the tips of that tool, the inserts need changing. Because look, you can physically see, it's like a fucking shell. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, and I was just looking at it going, what the hell has done that? Is, you know, have they done, is this like a rough cutter? But no, it just looks like it's just cut away and there's little jaggy marks and it looks like the tool's on its last legs and it's about to give up. Um, the other tool on the other side, because basically what they do is this is like this and they run wheels down either side. Or it's the same tool and one side is cutting there and then it's cutting on the other side, not this one. If you look at this, this isn't as bad, that cut there, it just isn't as bad of a texture as that is. You know what I mean? You can literally see the light glisten off that one. Well, if we turn this that way, the same way, the same light, it's not as bad. So, this is what I mean by, my God, them tool marks are fucking horrible. The weirdest thing is, is that them tool marks are just as bad on this one. So, they are really rough as fuck. Um, I'll show you some pictures now of the same process, or maybe even that video. You can see how smooth and nicely cut that is. So they are the finishes you can get. This is just fucking eh, horrible. So, um, uh, yes, the casting. So there's a casting mark there. I don't know how well we can get that in the light. There, you can see that, that there. That's a casting mark. 
and there's another one there. There's a lot of these casting marks where they tell you, uh, you know, oh, there we go, which manufacturer did it right there. Uh, which manufacturer did it, stuff like that. Um, there is also a lot of dross and shit on the inside of this hole that I'll have to get a picture of. And um, yes, one of the other things you can see is you can see, now this is a bit of a funny one for me, because usually parting marks aren't that big. So I don't know if this has been... Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is that usually there's a nice parting mark here. Now that has, looks like it, it hasn't been knocked off, that looks like it's actually part of the mould, but that doesn't look right to me. See, on a forging like this, there's only one of these that we can see. You can see this big gap here. You can see that this kind of has this, and it feels like it's had this hammered texture. If I can get that texture in there, yeah, it feels like it's got a hammered texture, where this literally feels like the imprint of the sand, if you get what I mean. Um, forgings are stronger simply because you are crushing the hot metal um, so you're basically not trying to force out inclusions what you are forcing out is any voids where it's loosely bound or whatever it also the grain structure and we'll talk about that the grain structure follows the contours instead of just where you machine and you cut across them it's a bit like wood grain and stuff and I'm literally going to do a video about that using a bit of wood um, but uh, yeah Forgings are more expensive um, initially, but in the long run, forgings can actually be just as cheap almost as cast uh, cast components. Go, go, Power Rangers! Go, go, Power Rangers! Go, go, Power Rangers! You might be Power Rangers! Right, where were we? God's sake. Right then, so, um, yes, you usually can tell by there's a party line, well that seems like quite a wide one to me, but usually it's quite thin compared to the forged ones. Um, another way you can tell, um, this has been um, machined after the fact, very roughly, it's just a skim coat, it dry and just to get a full circle. Um, another way you can tell the difference between forgings, which this isn't an, this isn't an excellent example, because they've done a lot of work on this after the fact. Um, but a way you can generally tell forgings from, crank sh um, from castings is that, God sake it's dark, there we go, bloody hellfire. Um, one of the ways you can tell is that this has an abrupt 45 at 90 degree edge, you can see that this basically just ends, it comes down and it goes, you know, so there's a perpendicularity there. Um, and the reason why that is, is with forgings generally they have like a rolled edge and it's because you've got to get this into a die. See with this, this is for a uh, cast, so it goes into a sand casting mould. Generally a lot of these are now, um, mach uh, not machined, but they're made by machine, a lot of the actual moulds and stuff of, for the sand. And they can pull off, um, because this is encapsulated sand, where basically what they do is, they almost, it's like 3D printing in a way, they'll basically produce two moulds, you cope and drag put it together and they don't have to have this draft angle anymore they just pour the metal in and then they put it on a riddler and it shakes it and then they basically some dude with a usually a pneumatic thing just basically cracks all the sand off and then you'll have a crankshaft excuse me <laughs> you'll have a crankshaft left over and they can get away now with these um, 90 degree edges and stuff where forgings usually what you see is you see like a, a flat bit and then you'll see two flanks and that's because as it goes into the die and they press they need uh, cutbacks and reliefs and stuff to make sure that they can separate um, the two dies when they do uh, forging because that's what they are. It's not die casting because it's not casting, it's just forging, but they are dies. Um, and then obviously all these other processes like uh, the machining of this and then this uh, bearing surface, all this has been machined here. So this will just be some horrible lump sticking out and then they turn all this down and so on and so on. Um, so yes, the materials that they generally use for um, castings, oh, what is it? This, well, there's, there's basically what they call the, Q, the QT series, 
and then there's 300s, 400s, 500s, 600s, um, and then it's, I think they missed seven, I think, no, six sevens are there, 800s and 900s. Uh, what this is, I can't tell. Um, and then, like I said, everything's just machined after the fact. And um, it's a cheaper process, is casting. It's easier to get up and running. You'll find a lot of uh, cheaper bikes that have cr uh, cast crankshafts. Um, it's not as bad as it sounds. Uh, <laughs> cast crankshafts are really pretty good nowadays. They use stuff like um, what they call iron molded shells and stuff like that. We'll go into that. That's more on the casting series that I'm doing. Um, and like I said, the forgings like this. Forgings, forgings are stronger um, and forgings is the way to go. Now you might see that well this has a flat 90 degree edge but this has been um, most of this has been machined after the fact you can see all the little chatter marks basically all of this has pretty much been machined the only real surface that hasn't been touched is this one here that kind of gives us the clue that this has been forged um, but yeah you know the difference between cast and um, forged stuff there is a difference but it's not night and day anymore not like it used to be um so yeah that's the difference between the two that's how you can tell the difference between the two the next video we're going to do on this is looking at this failure here looking at all uh, basically what we can see where the uh, crack propagated the benchmarking the overload failure and a lot of this mushing which we'll talk about and all the rest of it hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit